We have seen multiple discussions regarding maps in video games, from how often this practice uses immersion by containing too much information, to distracting the player from what is happening on screen. Something that is often discussed, however, is how often open worlds lack like in-world hints and signs for the user to use to navigate. You can probably roam around digital lands by using a minimap, but can you navigate in them by just using AM signs? First things first, roll the intro. One of my favorite layback games is Just Cause 4, a third-person shooter set in a massive open world. The game is pretty relaxing when driving around, and one thing in particular I like to do is to follow the infinite roads and see where they bring me. One day, however, driving endlessly in the desert of Acantilados, I asked to myself, can I reach the General Bertines airport by sticking to the road without looking at the map, by using, I don't know, road signs? Not only did it take me ages to reach the airport, but I realized that roads in games barely had any useful directional signs. The only road that had any road signs that was not a speed limit was the Southern Highway I-80, but even then I only knew its name, there was no other relevant information to where it was leading. Eventually, very close to the airport, I found one of those airplane signs, but at that point I could basically already see the control tower. The TLDR of this story? By only using signs, it is hard to get anywhere in the game. This poses a question, since developers know that the games have map already available and marked for the player to use, they even think about road signs. I now made examples of just codes, but other video games are probably guilty too. I know that this may appear to be a very trivial topic. I mean, road signs, come on. But since I hear a lot regarding how games should reduce their user interfaces, suddenly reducing such tools and relying on visual information becomes more relevant. It would be a contradiction to desire less reliance on minimas, but not caring about indications within the gaming world. Open world games are played for a variety of reasons and expand over a great variety of genres but all players who enjoy open worlds all share an inherent desire to be able to navigate the world with the least amount of artificial tools as possible. We want to feel part of the world and travel it smoothly, not to open a an menu and follow a blue line on the floor. In today's video, I don't wish to look at what games have signs and which don't in an over-the-top complex experiment like I did for measuring open worlds, but rather to bring fewer but more specific examples and explain why signs are important in video games by improving navigation and enhancing world building meaning we'll be looking at the question from both a technical side and from a world-building one, starting off with the former. The experiment I started the video with was very specific, but how many times do you need to open the world map or even look at the minimap to understand where you need to go? It's one of those things you think you don't do often, just like blinking, but the more you notice it, and the more you probably do it. There's nothing wrong with looking at the map to understand where you need to go, but if what you do in a video game is to follow a predetermined line on the floor to move from point A to point B, do you truly know how to navigate the world? I always wonder why some players complain about a game not being open world, but then treat every open world game like a linear game. The point of having signs in general is to guide the people who do not have a GPS, a principle that is true both in real life as well as in digital worlds. Sure, it would be naive to expect the player to learn 1700s Paris geography just to play Assassin's Creed Unity, but if a game offers sudden hints on where to go, rather than to pinpoint them on a map, that could lead to a more pleasant exploration of the French capital. But when I talk about signs, I do not solely refer to big white writings that point to a specific direction. Signs can refer to visual guidelines, to landmarks within the world. I may not know Zelda's Hyrule one to one, but when I roam the land, I can always observe at least a handful of landmarks that immediately convey my position. Rather than to look for a needle in a haystack by looking at what is often an over-complex minimap, it makes much more sense to navigate the world by using recognizable structures as reference points. You train yourself at orientating the world with your knowledge, so that eventually you will have an easier time to move across the land. Having distinct districts within a game also makes the player's navigation feel more natural. In games like Sunset Overdrive, the gaming world is divided into various very unique areas, such as Chinatown and Downtown, that make navigation easy to grasp even for new players. Of course, for more specific locations, signs could be used to indicate clearly, but still within the gaming world, where to go. In games where you walk, this could be old wood signs. In games where you drive, well, regular signs will do. If fully implemented, they could actually be used by the player, and save them the extra effort of opening the map for the millionth time. When I was playing Breath of the Wild without using fast travel, I slowly but surely started to remember some main roads that led to various points of interest, and signs often helped me to get on the right track. By using the in-game indications, I felt much more confident at traversing the world than relying on my map, enhancing therefore my sense of navigation. 
Keep in mind that signs are of course not only used for the road to indicate direction, but in the city to distinguish places between themselves. Games like Yakuza give a very specific name to every locale explorable in the city. Needless to say that in the game it is easier for the player to recognize even some secondary shops and get to them without looking at the map, but by looking on the streets. I get that signs may be used by a very fraction of the users, but if quests require players to move from point A to point B, I would rather try to find point B by using knowledge accumulated by my surroundings, signs included, than to follow my map blindly in a straight line. Improving the player's orientation within the world improves the player's immersion, and this can only be done by making the world navigable without reliance on a minimap. Signs definitely improve open worlds in this regard, but the effect they have on the player could be too hard to quantify. I only did a quote unquote follow the in game signs once, and I cannot recall specific examples where I explicitly use signs in a constant manner. But still, I believe that signs do implicitly make navigation easier and more integrated in the digital world. Speaking of, while signs may, at least to some, have neglectable relevance in the gaming world as an effective tool to navigate the world, a better creation of signs does definitely have a greater alternative purpose the purpose to enhance world building. How? Let us explore it. Even if the usage players make of science can be debated, it is undeniable that science enhances the world in various other ways, especially when it comes to world building. Of course, it goes without saying that giving names to streets and buildings by definition gives more character to the various locations scattered around the world. These details help to make the game within the world feel more organic, the roads you are traversing have an identity, a name, a place in the digital universe. Going back to the example I started the video with, the sole highway within the entirety of Chakos 4 Solis has indeed a name, the I-80, referenced even in a small page in the game's wiki. This could be seen as a footnote, but for a game that expands over a thousand square kilometers, I think it is noticeable enough that it gives the game that touch of personality. I only wish more byways in the game also had a name. Even more ideally, Sense would actually be part of explorative quests, Rather than to say, another settlement needs your help, I'll mark it on your map, it makes so much more sense to hear a vague indication that leads the player to look for signs to follow. Something like, there's a guy waiting for you at Tiber Island, near Capitol Hill, is already more exciting than to hear... Oh god, I don't wanna say it again. Another settlement has sent word that they need our help. I'll mark it on your map. Go find out what they need. As I stated previously, what's the point of building an open world if the game is just going to treat every quest as a follow the blue line in this tight corridor until you reach your destination? One game that is criticized for having an open world with this little personality is Mafia 2, and for good reason, the game is often guilty of this type of quests. I will not be naive and say that science will fix the game, but if the missions within the game had some flexibility, perhaps science could have played a major role that led to less linear and predictable routes around the American city, like we've mentioned for Fallout. But a quest revolving into a more dynamic exploration of the city, assisted by science, sounds like a good combination to me. But going back to the greater topic of game design, Games that have meaningful signs have put more effort in the world building. I always find kind of lazy how games like the older Pokemon titles just had a blended number for every route, that conveniently aligned perfectly to the player's journey. I get it that it's convenient, but it feels awfully fake. Rather than to call it Route 1, Route 10, Route 20, it would make much more sense to link the route's name to its main characteristic. A route known for its flowers could be called Flower Route. You can even go a bit more abstract and call routes like Spring Route or whatever. Not Route 222, please! Also, as previously mentioned, signs are used to distinguish in-game buildings. Having a better name for your various points of interest makes the world more genuine. You are no longer going to a generic shop, but to a branded, recognizable location that may sell slightly different things than the player might need. A broad example of Yakuza to explain how this has an effect on helping the player to orientate in the gaming world, but I did not address how having all these signs helps the player to immerse within Tokyo and Osaka. All these signs around town make the town feel much more alive. Not all buildings might be explorable, but even the background buildings have a purpose in the digital world created by the developers. Giving names and thus signs to indicate such names, so streets, routes, shops, cities and whatnot, makes the world feel more genuine, more real, as if people living within them actually have a functioning society. We always discuss what makes a world more believable, and while big changes definitely have priority, it is the smaller things that can make or break immersion. We want to see our digital worlds not to be perfectly realistic, but credible, to enhance our sense of disbelief and immerse ourselves in what is believable. Signs are a tool to achieve this, so they're not one of the big ones, but a useful tool nonetheless. Before jumping to the conclusion, I invite you all to do an experiment similar to mine in an open world game of your choice, and see whether or not the signs within the game plus your knowledge can lead you to your desired location at ease. 
Mates gave me one resolve, but yours may lead to a new one. Signs may appear to be in the background, unused, forgotten, but they hide more under the sleeve than one might think. They are a powerful tool both when it comes to enhancing the player's experience by reducing UI tools like minimaps, but also enhancing the world building and making open worlds truly feel open. I had a very hard time finding that damn airport in Solis. I did eventually, but I had to admit that I underestimated the challenge by overestimating the signs in game. But who knows? Perhaps Circle's 5 signs will be clearer and indicate to me the road to take to roam the gigantic open world. If you made it this far, I thank you one too many signs times for watching today's video. Today's topic was bizarre, but hey, you can't say it was not creative, and I hope I made you think about something you never thought before. Who knows, you might even start looking for signs next time you play. As usual, if you like this video, do not forget to leave it a like, to share it and subscribe for more. I wish you the most wonderful days of all, and as usual, arrivederci!